Hi everyone, welcome back to our Red Blossom Tea channel. Today we'll look at subscription two. You'll be getting a box like this, similar to the first subscription, but without the tea set. In this box, there are three teas. There's a Liwan Guapian green tea from Anhui province, the Iron Goddess monkey pick from Anxi, and we have the Old Grove 2013, the strongest in this box. So let's start with Liwan Guapian. Liuan Guapian is from Anhui province. It's in, from an area that is um, a lot more remote. These tea farms are not accessible by most people. So grown in a very high elevation, these teas have a very rich, viscous finish. It's very much like matcha, except it's not fishy. It's thick, it's creamy. So we'll first brew it in the competition set since you have it from the last collection. I'm adding water in. So there's about a teaspoon in here. And the water should be good enough to drink, but not necessarily so hot that you can't sip it. The steep time is also a little bit quicker. So we'll give it about a minute. Similar to matcha, this is um, going to brew bright green, but it's not fishy, uh, it's not seaweed light. Instead, it's much more buttery. It has a little more of the savory notes that you expect from a Japanese green tea, but I think it's delicious on its own as well as with snacks. So in traditional matcha, you would uh, ceremony, ceremonial grape mostly, uh, you would put it in a bowl like this, place some in and froth it with the whisk. Uh, we can do the same with this tea. So if I enjoy this tea at home and I want the convenience of just having one vessel, I would place the tea in. You would use a little bit less uh, since we're not going to strain it out. And then we'll add water to about three quarters full. And once the leaves start to sink to the bottom, it'll be ready to drink. Otherwise, it'll go into your mouth. But a lot of the Chinese tea drinkers do enjoy the tea, even uh, having a leaf or two in their mouth, because it's nice to be able to chew it. So since it's similar to matcha, you can consume the leaves as well. And if you were to enjoy it this way, then it also keeps your hand very warm. When the tea starts to cool down and sink to the bottom, then you'll get a thicker, richer flavor. So each steep, it's like the second, the third infusion. I'm gonna pour out a little bit for you to see in this white cup. And that way you can see how bright green it is. This crop is uh, harvested later in April. Normally our dragon wells are early March harvest, but with this one, it's always harvested later in April because it's the secondary leaf and the tertiary leaf that gets picked. So when we enjoy this tea, what I like to do is have a little bit of sweets, like um, similar to mochis, but this is called tangyuan. So tangyuan is um, glutinous rice flour with sesame paste in the middle, and I've boiled them, and we sprinkle a little bit of sesame on there. So once the tea is ready in a bowl, we'll enjoy it this way. And with each sip, it gets a little bit richer, but it doesn't tend to overbrew in a bowl like this because the quality of this tea is so nice that it's not astringent, even when you do overbrew it. And even if I have forgotten some of the tea in the bowl, it still tastes good when it's cold. The second tea in the subscription box is Iron Goddess Monkey Pick, Taekwon Ying. This particular one is from southern part of Fujian province in Nansi County so often referred to as Ansi Oolong. I'm gonna use a little more because we're doing a more traditional Guangdong style. When you uh, go to dim sum houses and have Cantonese food, uh, they usually use larger teapots. I'm using a glass pot in this case, so you can see how the leaves unravel. But usually if you have a larger teapot at home, this is ideal for brewing uh, Iron Goddess Monkey Pick because we could use water that's much hotter. This tea is 30% oxidized and it's confection roasted, though traditionally it is charcoal roasted. 
but it's very forgiving. So we could use water that's a bit hotter and let it sit longer. That's why it's ideal for having with dim sum because when you have the small little dumplings, they can be very heavy. And with this tea, it does cut all of that heaviness. But for me at home, if I'm having um, Iron Goddess Monkey Pig, I think it pairs really well with dry fruits. What we have here is dark um, sweet cherries. It has a little bit of its tartness, but it's also nice to be able to pull out the nuttiness of this tea. It's slightly more floral, though it's not like a jasmine tea. So I'm going to pour this out into a larger cup like Chinese restaurants do. And with this tea, even if we do overbrew, it doesn't get quite as dark because it goes through more of a, a lower oxidation level. The third tea in the collection is Shui Xian. This tea is actually one of my favorites to have in the evening because it's from 2013. So after months of roasting, it will also need to rest for a couple of years. So I prefer to brew those in my personal Yixing pot. In this Yixing, it's quite small. This is about 150 milliliters, but I like to brew it in here and then top it up with water several times to pour it into a larger cup like this. So for the Yixing pot, we can also use a little more leaves but it is personal preference. For me, I'm not as sensitive to caffeine levels in the darker teas because in the roasting process and during the resting process, caffeine does dissipate. So after a heavy meal, I prefer to have a tea that's a little bit darker. And then we'll pour very hot water into the Yixing. You could let it sit for only about a minute once the leaves rehydrate, we can then decant into the larger cup. Or of course, you could brew it and pour it into a yixing as well. Because it's a higher oxidized tea, um, the color of the brew is much richer. So it has that charcoal roasting that permeates throughout the room when you brew it. But what's really nice is when we brew a tea like this, um, you can also have sweets like the chocolate. Uh, this is from my friend Richard Dancing Lion again, but this is a little more unique. Besides the rare Guatemalan chocolate, he also placed the Shui Xian leaves into the white chocolate. This white chocolate is pretty buttery and creamy, so it does pair very well with teas that are a little bit more intense. This is actually so nice that I, I'm, I'm picking up a lot of the nose while it's resting to, to cool here. So I'm going to take a sip just because it's, it's so delicious. Mm. And then of course you could enjoy it with the chocolate as well. So I look forward to our next subscription and we'll have three more teas to surprise you when you get the box. But if you do like this video, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website at redblossomtea.com to see all the teas.